Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Contractor Evolution. This is your host, Benji. A couple weeks ago, we did a live roundtable with some of our highest performing builders and found out firsthand how they've used standard operating procedures to tame the chaos in their businesses. Everyone wants their company to run like a well-oiled machine, but very few actually put the systems in place to make that happen. SOPs, when implemented correctly, will transform even the most scattered and disorganized business into one that's calm, controlled, and fun to lead. Blaze McDonald of Mac Renovations and Brett Bernard of Procore Group are two Breakthrough Academy members who've done precisely that. And in the conversation that follows, we're going to learn how to get your team actually excited about helping you create SOPs how to use flowcharts, videos, and other forms of media to make them more engaging and memorable. Because guess what? The days of 30-page manuals that no one reads are gone. And lastly, we talk about fostering adoption because an SOP is only good if people follow it. So let's dive in and talk SOPs with Brett and Blaze. You're watching Contractor Evolution, where we unpack the systems, tactics, and skills you need to take your fast-growing contracting business to the next level. You're here to learn what it takes to scale up, work less, and increase profitability. You've come to the right place. Stay tuned to learn what separates the new breed of contractor from the old school and welcome to your ultimate guide on the business of contracting. Today's session, guys, is all about standard operating procedures, which doesn't really um, sound that sexy uh, of an idea. But when we get into sort of the, the calm control, the lower stress levels, the, the efficiency gains, um, the the clean job sites, the happy customers, the fewer callbacks, the more referrals that these SOPs drive. It actually is pretty sexy. And I think you're going to really enjoy the conversation that follows. These roundtables are designed to be a very free flowing conversation. It's kind of a combination of a it's like a if a podcast and a webinar had a baby it would be this so there's going to be some slides there's going to be some educational content we deliver it's also going to be very conversational and mostly it's going to be brett and blaze talking about how they've implemented sops into their business the difference that it's made the process that they followed the results they're getting they're going to share some of the stuff that they've built with you and i think you're going to get a lot out of it um, as always, when we do these sessions, we love to give tons of free stuff away. So there's going to be a bundle of SOP templates and guides that are really going to save you a ton of time to get started with this. So instead of staring at a blank Word document where you're kind of overwhelmed and you're not really sure where to start, we'll just give you something that's like 80 or 90% done. It'll be industry specific. It'll be role specific. And you can tweak the stuff that you need to. Um, it's just going to, it's going to get you a, a massive head start on this. If SOPs are something that you want to get building. So stay tuned to the very end. We will send you to a landing page where you can grab this stuff. Um, and it's yours to keep. And it's our way of saying, thanks for being here. Here's the agenda for the next 90 minutes. We're going to do a, some quick intros. Um, we're going to meet Brett. We're going to meet Braze, uh, uh, blaze. We're going to meet Zach. And then we will get into the round table discussion. That will be the roundtable discussion will be about an hour and change um, at the top of the hour. So in 56 minutes from now, we're going to do a quick break. Um, uh, it doesn't mean leave the, the webinar room. We're just going to do a quick pause on the conversation. Uh, we're going to hear from Zach uh, from Builder Trend. I'm going to talk for a second about Breakthrough Academy, and then we're going to get back to the roundtable discussion. We will do Q&A at the end. Uh, and there's going to be an opportunity to book a call or book a meeting with either us or with Builder Trend, should you want to do that. So, um, Blaze, let's hear from you. Uh, I'd love to just get get maybe a, a two minute, three minute uh, backstory on on you and Mac Renos. Tell us tell us about about your story. So, <clears throat> I was uh, my dad started uh, Mac Reno in 1980, and I kind of I grew up around the business and and uh, went on and did my own thing as young sons do. Um, I was a, a industrial marine electrician with the Department of National Defense. I started a job and thought, why does everybody hate it here? This is working man's Disneyland. Um, and then two years later, I kind of figured it out. So um, fast forward to about 2009, I flipped my kneecap over wakeboarding. I've been, that was a, um, it was a, major career shift. I couldn't get down to engine rooms and, uh, 
Um, my dad eventually invited me into the office just to watch the phones while the project coordinator it was actually on crutches. And uh, I thought, oh, this is kind of interesting. I just had a new light on the business. So quit my cushy government job and uh, joined uh, the world of uh, private enterprise. And then took a six-figure loss my first year. Right. Great start. <laughs> Since 2012, you, you, you've grown a ton, uh, as you guys can see on on um, on screen here. Business has grown to 18 million, so that that six figure loss was was um, a one off, and there's been a whole bunch of improvements since. Um, and uh, we're really excited to have you here, Blaze. Th thanks for taking the time to to tell us your story, and and I'm I'm excited to get into this conversation to hear about the job you've done with SOPs and Mac Reno. Brett, tell us a bit about you. Sure, thanks for having me, Benji. Uh, my construction career started when I was 15, working for a roofing and siding company, in Central New York. Uh, so I always had a knack for construction. Uh, out of college, I ended up teaching construction in a middle school, uh, tech ed, the old wood shop. And uh, moonlighting, I was doing kitchens and bathroom renovations actually making more money than teaching in, in 2003 decided to quit and uh, handed my my resignation for the teaching gig and started my own business and so in 03 i was the belt on contractor i did everything from the demo to the framing to the electrical plumbing did it all myself ended up hiring a couple guys from there we started full gut renovations and in 2011, was approached by a commercial developer to manage a bunch of his commercial projects, multifamily projects, tenant improvements. And uh, that was kind of my pivot into the commercial world. And so, you know, projects have just grown in, in complexity. And so um, SOPs have been a, a huge shift in that and, and allowing me to build a team and actually get everything that's in my head, out of my head and into somebody else's hands. Um, beautiful. And and you guys can see the growth here on screen just in the last year. Uh, there's been, I can't do that kind of math on my head, but it looks like almost to one, you, you've grown your business by, you know, like 70, 80% in the last year. And I know SOPs have played a big role in that. Zach, I don't have a slide for you, but, um, classic, tell, tell, classic I know. T tell us a bit about you. Tell us a bit about Builder Trend. Yeah. Hey, everybody. My name is Zach Otovich. I am a director of what's called customer success at Builder Trend. So I have the privilege to work with the teams that when you sign up for Builder Trend, you get assigned a, co a coach and account manager to kind of help you implement the software. Now, I made my name to fame because I was an on-site consultant. So I actually traveled around the country. I've been to over 80 businesses to implement SOPs. It's my passion. I love working with contractors. I'm really excited to be here today. Thank you. So I like this idea of the growth zone. This is something we talk about a lot at Breakthrough Academy. And if you've been to one of our other web classes, you've seen this slide before, um, but it bears repeating. So I think for a lot of you, if you're you know clicking on an ad like the one you clicked on and registering on a landing page like the one you filled out and coming to a webinar like the one we're doing right now, there's a pretty good chance that you're in this growth zone. You're somewhere between two ends of the spectrum. One is grassroots level where your business is really young, really nascent. It's quite chaotic. It's also really fun. It's a bit of a roller coaster ride. Um, Things are changing very quickly. You're kind of running everything from the hip or out of your head to the enterprise level, which is sort of a large, scaled out, super predictable, super predictable, um, you know, SOPs in place, financial controls in place. Not as exciting, but it's way more sustainable. So if those are kind of two ends of a spectrum, you, a lot of you, and let me know in the chat box if this is the case. Just give me a thumbs up or a that's me or yep, sounds right. Um, I think a lot of you are somewhere in between here. You're, you're not you're not stuck in sort of the messy first year of your business, but you also haven't quite arrived yet. And you're trying to you're trying to make your way through this growth zone um, as quickly and as painlessly as possible. This is where we live. This is where Breakthrough Academy lives. This is what we do. This is the type of entrepreneurs that we help. Same with Builder Trend and SOPs. Just as a you know, core component of that journey play a huge role. That's why it's like literally on, on the right side of the screen here. Um, 
And so I'm looking forward to just unpacking, sort of demystifying this idea, which I think, you know, at times sounds a little corporate, a little white collar, a little a little stuffy, like, oh, standard operating procedures. We're going to make this a lot more accessible, a little more fun, uh, and, and make this a very easy to implement system in your business. I'm curious to hear from the room, though, before we dive in, um, let's just do a bit of a pulse check. What is causing the most chaos in your daily operations right now? Take a second, think about it. You can put in a sentence or two. Uh, just the first thing that comes to your head is it um, is it supply chains? Is it you have not a great roster of subs? Do you have difficult customers? What's going on in your business right now that's causing chaos on the operational front? I'm going to read a few of these off. Okay, clients, lack of structure, no employment agreements, not having SOPs, warranty service calls, systems and procedures not in place, knowledge level fluctuations, inventory management, getting bids out on time, pre-construction process, pre-construction process, lack of SOPs, time management, need help. Okay, <laughs> help. <laughs> great. This is a safe space and we love honesty, so keep that up. Um, Whatever it is that you put in the chat box, I want you to maybe take a piece of paper, put put pen to paper and just write that down and keep it really front of mind as we go through this conversation because I promise there's going to be something that we discuss, an idea that gets bounced around, something that comes up on screen that is going to apply to that situation, to that pain point you find yourself in. So let's dive into um, let's dive into the conversation that follows. I want to give you a very, very quick definition. My favorite definition of SOPs, you know, obviously it stands for standard operating procedure. Here's an easier way to think about it. An SOP is a clearly documented, understood, and agreed upon way of carrying out a task, right? So if you have all your systems in your head, if your task execution is varied and this foreman does it this way, this other foreman does it another way, if your documentation is in binders or in the truck or in the or in the, the glove compartment or on a shelf in the office collecting dust and nobody uses them, or if it feels too complicated to start building these, you're in the right place. Uh, let's dive in. So, Brett, I'm gonna I'm gonna lob this question to you first. What is your systems evolution story from chaos to calm? We had some, you, you mentioned a little bit about kind of the origin story and leaving teaching, getting into business for yourself, for yourself. Take us from that like business launch moment to now and how systems have played a role uh, in your growth and your journey. Sure. Uh, like I said at the beginning, I started my business in 03 and for the first 17 years, I created a job for myself. And so it was me and a few guys. So I was the one that was kind of doing everything. So everything lived in my head. And I knew that if I wanted to grow the construction business, I needed to hire more people. And so when hiring those people, I needed to show them what to do in some sort of way because I didn't have anything written down in any type of procedure. And so I doubled the size of the team a year and a half ago. And the first project that we did together as a team went completely sideways um, for multiple reasons. But it was a little embarrassing with hiring a, a couple new guys, a, a senior project manager, an operations manager to sit in those meetings as those projects went sideways, one specifically. And so after walking out of that meeting, we all had lunch. I said, I said, guys, this is not how this goes. I said, so let's learn from this and let's kind of create some systems to avoid this from happening in the future. And that was kind of the onset of the SOPs as we see it today. Uh, we've also made the switch from co-construct to builder trend, uh, which has been a huge help. And we've went really hard over the past eight months to implement builder trend uh, as a funnel for all of our systems and processes. Beautiful. Um, Blaze, same same question to you. What what's your systems evolution story? Well, when uh, 
you know, when we had that for that first, uh, my first year as operations manager, we had that six figure loss. I would, I, I had no, I said to my dad, like, what's, you know, what's going on? I left my government job for this. And, um, we just had no way, like he knew how many, by how many, how many times the phone would ring a week if how, how we were doing in jobs. But you know, I, I didn't. So like, like, uh, um, they'd been banging their head at a certain volume level for a long time. The market turned and we had no way, no way of like projecting or, or finding out. So the, the first thing that we started doing is just, is just financial controls and, and processes, you know, even from like, you know, we had, we had multiple salespeople using different cost sheets and the, and the, uh, the bookkeeper was putting budgets in and, and, you know, it's garbage in garbage out. So that's where we first started is just getting those financial pieces um controls um and then it really kind of blossomed from there anything else that you would say about kind of the the monumental growth from you know um 2012 to now was doing yeah the business let me let me get caught up here the business was doing okay two million and losing money to 11 years later 18 million i mean I, we don't have time to go through every single chapter, but is there anything else that you would just talk about at a high level that, uh, that got you from there to here? Yeah. I mean, like, like, and, and just to be clear, like we were hitting three or 4 million consistently with profit until that year, but we just, we didn't have the systems in place to like, to turn it around mid year. Mm -hmm. So, um, the biggest part for us, I took a lean course and, uh, just about, you know, just making sure that our cost sheets match the, match the cost codes and the contract match the cost codes that the guys are punching in on, you know, that was the the first kind of piece, you know, and then we, then we eventually looked at our entire system, um, like through project management, the PMBOK, you know, from um, execution, monitor control, all, all of those pieces and, and found where all of those SOPs, you know, different processes could be captured. Mm -hmm. and then identified mm -hmm. and followed by all. Zach, when you, you would have a slightly different uh, like angle on this when, you, you know, think about the 80, the 80 site visits, the, you know, now you would lead a, a large customer success team. Like you would, you would hear a lot of people at the early stages of this, at the later stages of this, What's your perspective on the systems evolution story uh, for contractors from your vantage point? Yeah, it's it's really interesting because a couple stories pop in my head of customers that I worked with. Uh, one was a builder out of Kansas City. They had been in business since the, the 60s, family run business. And their estimating process was done by one guy in that entire uh, history of that company. And he one day he wasn't there anymore and they were shook. They didn't know how to do his job. And it actually, they lost a million dollars on their next build. Uh, they do large custom home building uh, out in Kansas city. And that I, I remember early in my career, I did, I did that visit. It hit me like a ton of bricks, like life or death. I mean, their, their business was struggling and you know, it was my job to help them get those SOPs. So I, I look at it as like, you know, you could be in business for a long time and be really successful. But if you want to have that growth, you need to get it out of people's heads. You need to start documenting and you start iterating. Otherwise you're putting yourself at risk a long term for success. And so, you know, even if you're somebody who is brand new and you're learning this lesson now, like huge opportunity to avoid those mistakes. Like Blaze, you, you mentioned, you know, losing 150, $200,000 in your first build. And if you've been doing this for a long time, it's never too late to improve what you're doing and hit new heights. I'll weigh in on this question and say this, my, my, my perspective after sort of six years in the breakthrough Academy universe and seeing, you know, North of a thousand, um, contractors come through the program is when you think about, gr oops, when you think about growth or you think about evolution, these words, uh, in the context of a blue collar business, like the ones we're talking about and talking to right now, to me, it is, it is systems. It is infrastructure that unlocks that. 
compared to other industries where when you hear the word growth, they talk about leads, they talk about marketing, they talk about brand building, they talk about uh, sales force. And I'm not saying that those things don't matter for a business like yours. But I think one thing to be aware of is if you're a growth oriented contractor, yes, you need good salespeople. Yes, you need marketing systems. But realize that the demand for your services is so high and what you do, the skill sets of the people that you employ are in such high demand and are actually so rare that if you have a remotely efficient business internally, the demand looks after itself to, to a large degree. It's not to say you don't have to pick up the phone and call. It's not to say that you don't have to get out there and hustle, but the easiest way to grow your business is is through systems. And, and what we've seen in Breakthrough Academy is, is when you look after kind of the project management, the SOPs, being able to complete work efficiently, qu quickly, on budget, on time with happy customers, the growth is explosive and you can, <laughs> the marketing and, and sales is almost an afterthought. Um, and so I, I think that that is something to be aware of that's kind of unique to this industry in particular. Question for Blaze: When when you started uh, with SOP building, literally, like just you don't need to you don't need to answer this like in a textbook. Like you you can just tell us literally what you did. Where did you start with SOP building in Mac Reno? So um, you know, my dad had always been a systems guy. Like we used to have a big board in the office where we moved magnets. Like you know, and in 2010, I was at the Builder Show in Chicago, and we signed up with Builder Trend. I think at the time they had like. 20 employees or something like that it was the smallest booth now i see them in vegas and there's probably 200 employees in the vegas show but uh um that was really kind of our first implementation and probably about six years ago is where we figured you know um we had sales we had project managers we had we had uh um field staff we we really looked at our entire workflow and mapped it you know, from 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 the the way that a, a call comes in, all the way through to when we're handing over the keys and feeding them back into our marketing program. You know, like like we we hired somebody off of Upwork. Um, she was a process person that was really good with Vimeo, and and uh, we just walked her through our process, and she would just listen to us and and create the workflow. You know, and if and I, I figured if we could explain it to a layman, we can explain it to a new employee. You know, so that was that was the 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 biggest thing was keep it keep it simple, simple enough to explain a complex process because it's complex. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's so many variables, and the only thing that you can control are those repeatable processes, those checks and balances, those gates that you put up to 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 stop the things that you know inevitably losing money again and again and again and again and again blaze we there's uh there's this note from our our prep block last week and and a question has just come up that i think that i think kind of hits on this so i want to bring it up uh so joel's asking i always want to know the difference between having a bureaucracy and having an efficient sop in place where's that line and then and then you have this note here about 80 percent strict 20 percent flex I'm just going to lob that one to you. What, what's the 80% strict 20% flex thing? Yeah, I, I mean, we. I'm going to pick on Ford here because I've been battling with the Ford dealership. Um, <laughs> you know, like where you're so over processed, you know, like I've had, I've had, you know, I'm trying to fix a strut in my truck and, and I'm, you know, I just need to explain one thing and nobody of the 30 people will walk outside to take a talk, to take a look so that they can tell the tech. And then they phone me at the end of the day and tell me the same damn thing that I was trying to tell them. Um, you know, you have to be flexible enough to like, I'm, I am, I am extremely low uh, conscientiousness. I, I hate process. I'm my, my unique gift is to get around roadblocks. You know, so, but at the same time, having that at, at the head of a company um, is, is, is terrible. So <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I, I, it, it's very good in some ways, but, you know, so you have to be able to set the parameters and then, and then allow for that variation. And then, mm -hmm. and then the other thing was, if there is a variation, like you have to be able, there has to be some, some follow up or, you know, like to, to close the loop on those things that would normally be closed by that process. 
if that makes sense. Um, it 100% makes sense. I just had this guy on the podcast the other day who's kind of an executive coach for for high-level leaders, and we were talking about some patterns that he sees with business owners that really hold them back. And one thing that he talked about was this idea of overusing a strength. And you mentioned problem solving, and a lot of business owners on this on this web class right now would be extremely strong problem solvers. Being a good problem solver like innately makes you a bad SOP builder because you go, I don't need it. I'll just figure it out when I get there. And so it's like be, being that, you know, you say I'm really good at maneuvering around obstacles. That's amazing. In the early days, there's going to come a point where you go, you know what? I, I actually, I can't, I can no longer maneuver a business this size around every obstacle. Right. I might need to kind of wise up here and build some process around this, maybe delegate some of the building of it to someone else, maybe use a, an AI tool to help, maybe use, uh, get, get, work with a company like Breakthrough Academy to help. Uh, it's just an interesting note about like what, you know, we say this all the time, what got you here won't get you there. In some instances, what got you here is actually like the the biggest roadblock to getting you there. So you always got to watch overusing the skill. Can I um, just add to that? Just yeah. To that 80, 20, if you document and, you know, like succinctly figure out the 20% of your most impactful SOPs and, and nail them down, that'll cover 80% of your entire workflow. Mm -hmm. that's the thing to remember. Like you don't need to have everything. You just need the 20 most impactful stuff that makes you money. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I was going to say is, you know, Joel's question. I almost started typing out my perspective because it's like outcomes dictate results. And so if your SOPs are inhibiting that, then it's probably not very good. And then, you know, internally at Builder Trend too, feedback from the people following the SOPs tells me a lot at how much friction is being introduced to us trying to achieve our goals. Whether it's a contracting business or a tech company, you need people to be following the expectations, but if they're, you know, if that's inhibiting them from being effective or great or, you know, really reaching the goals in a timely manner, you need to you need to listen. You need to be open to your employees giving you input to be able to adjust to that. Um, these are living, breathing documents, not something that you build once forever, which is what I think kind of plays into this whole idea of like seek perfection, but accept excellence. Like you don't need this. To, it's, this isn't the final, final version. It never will be. So don't waste your time on that last 5% perfecting it where you're fussing over what font and is there a comma and where it needs to be like, if it is, if it is in the territory of, of good enough, it's so much better than where you were before. And by the way, you're going to have to update this within 18 months anyway. So get it live and get it working, get the feedback and iterate from there. Brett, I want to hear from you on this. Um, so, you know, I, I, we were talking offline the other day. Like, I think I think a lot of this started for you in in 2020 when you you kind of took on a big job and it and it went sideways, did it not? Absolutely. Um, yeah, it, like I said, it was a little embarrassing when that happened with a fresh team, and so we kind of really sat down and and kind of assessed where we were at. Did essentially an internal audit of the company and and what we were doing, how we were doing things. And so we, our first stab at SOPs was Google Docs. And so, you know, we, we had some templates that we received from Breakthrough Academy and other online sources. And uh, so it started just kind of putting something together. We knew it wasn't going to be perfect. We tried making them ourselves. I'm, I'll be the first to admit I'm not good at making SOPs. And so when we went and made that switch from co-construct to builder trend, we brought in a third party consultant kind of helped set up the process to the way we were doing things. And we were looking for a way to actually systematize what we were doing in builder trend. And so, you know, the, the, the new thing is AI, you know, there's, there's, there seems to be an AI app for everything out there these days. And so we started looking into what was out there that can actually help us document the clicks and what we were actually doing within builder trend to then formalize that. And I basically brought the team on board and said, we are going to create these SOPs together that way it's kind of on the same page. There's more buy-in from the team because it's something that we all kind of created together. 
of my senior project manager, Sergi. Shout out to Sergi. He's really kind of taken the, the, ch the charge with this and basically created a matrix of all of our tasks within Builder Trend and came, used the AI program to actually capture the screenshots as we were clicking through. That way we can actually take that SOP in a PDF form, give it to a, a new hire um, or somebody on the team that hasn't really been utilizing Builder Trend to the full extent or how to create a daily log. And they can actually just follow along. So we've kind of dumbed it down to, to a way that it's just kind of following along as opposed to where we started, which was just a Google Drive that, you know, that Google Drive just goes in a folder and nobody ever looks at it. And so um, this is all pretty new within the past couple of years of, of the progress that we've made, but um, so far it's been great. You mentioned getting your team involved with the creation and rollout of the these, which is a thread I wanna I wanna pick up on later. Um, using the human resources, using the brain power that you have in the building already to write this stuff and create this stuff, or update this stuff. Um, it's a really important point because I think owners often overestimate how much they actually know about the ground level nuts and bolts of their business, especially if you've, especially if you've had, you've been off the site for a couple of years. Um, we, there's, uh, sounds like a strong word, but there's like intellectual arrogance around how much you think you know about what's going on. It's really good to just go to the ground level and talk to the carpenter and talk to the foreman and talk to the laborer, uh, talk to your sub trades, et cetera. So we'll, we'll circle back to that. I want to just weigh in on this question really quick. Where do you start with SOP building? Okay, so I've got three quick thoughts on this. The first is where to start. You you start with, you fix what bugs you, to use a quote from Paul Akers, who I think we're going to mention later. Um, okay, so here's a way to think about this. We hear every day about everyone's triggers in modern society. I'm triggered by this. I'm triggered by that. And I think for most of you, you know, you, you might get it. Sometimes it makes you roll, roll your eyes. Uh, I like the word triggers and I'm going to, I'm going to tweak it to think of business triggers. What in your business gets you f like really irritated very, very quickly. I guarantee if you reflect on that for like two minutes, you're going to have three to 10 things that just drive you mental. And it's going to be different for every person. I would start with those things. <laughs> Deal with the stuff that irritates you the most. Um, that is a great place to point your focus. If it's not something that that um, grinds, your, grinds your gears, uh, it's probably something you can get to later. So I would start with the stuff that bugs you the most. The second thing I would say about where to start is you don't need a 10 page manual when a one page checklist will do the job. Don't overcomplicate it. Uh, something is better than nothing. Um, and you wouldn't believe how many mistakes can be avoided by simple bullet points on a page that gets laminated and taped to the crew kit or a PDF that gets installed on everyone's phone. Like it's the, we, you can make these very fancy for super complex tasks. You can, all, you can also make it a minimum viable product and that's just as effective 90% of the time. The last thing I'll say about using AI tools, which I, you know, I sort of come and go on, every, anyone that knows me knows my sort of ethical qualms with this whole conversation. <laughs> However, they do have some utility. So, but if you're going to use GPT to build an SOP for your construction company, be ready to heavily, heavily edit what it spits back to you. What you're going to get is very surface level. It's not going to be nuanced and it's not going to be customized to your business, which does have unique processes and ways in which it does things. So really important note about that. For God's sake, don't copy paste what GPT gives you when you're trying to implement systems. Um, should we move on, guys? So the next question, which SOP implementations have measurably impacted your business the most? Um, Brett, let, let's, uh, no, sorry. Yeah, we're going to start with Brett on this one. 
which which ones are the biggest needle movers? You know, like it could be pre-construction, it could be a quality control thing, it could be project management related, it could be sales related. Just go in your business, what are what SOP implementations have made the biggest ROI for you? Financial tracking. Uh, okay, for, tell uh, us more. Yep. Uh, about eight months ago, I hired a fractional CFO and we brought her on board and we essentially recreated all of our cost codes, um, kind of implemented that into Builder Trend. We made sure that all that was, you know, we essentially did an audit, the same thing that Blaze discussed earlier, that you have to go through foundational and just kind of make sure that everything is matching up. Um, we had a, a, another bookkeeper before that and it was not lined up. And when we would, used to look at budgets, everything in, was in the red. Uh, it was just, it was such a mess that we essentially had to start from scratch. It was just easier to start from scratch than to, to kind of fix the, the airplane in flight. Uh, so that's what we did. And uh, then with using Builder Trend, we were able to go from, through pre-construction to our estimating your contracts and then track throughout the project. Um, so that was our biggest pain point, and that's where we've got the biggest ROI with with bringing the team on board, the CF uh, fractional CFO, and and kind of seeing it through from start to finish. Uh, when you think about the financial tracking aspect and the complexity of the business that you run, can you speak to? I mean, everyone know that's sort of a buzzword these days, and know your numbers, and you know, be data driven. Um, can you maybe speak to, can you maybe speak to um, the benefits that's given you as a leader, the vision you have now, the visibility into things that you didn't have before. And I'm Aaron just offline is also asking if you can speak up a little. I think your I think your mic is just a little further away from the rest of us. Um, sure. But, but, but speak to the financial tracking thing a bit, please. Yeah. So when we were originally doing these, these estimates, we never really, you know, you hear the buzzword GP, net profit. And so we never really kind of understood what that meant while we were uh, putting together the projects. You can go back at the end of the project and actually do that calculation, but to be able to do it from the beginning and actually kind of set a target for the team to follow, uh, that's, that's really been a game changer for us. And we've been able to adjust our numbers uh, from a from a gross profit perspective at the beginning, as opposed to just waiting till the end to see where we stood. And so setting up the estimates in that way has, has been super helpful. Massive. Blaze, to you, um, yeah. which SOP implementations are the biggest needle mover for Mac Reno? I was, I was just jotting some stuff down as you're you're saying there, and I have hiring, onboarding, lead intake, sales process, sales production handoff or handover, financial controls. But the number one process that has moved the needle for us over the last ten years was our strategic planning and meeting rhythm. Mm -hmm. So, like like our our yearly offsite, our quarterly our quarterly offsite, our weekly leadership meeting. Those three meetings are something that we've never strayed away from. So like uh, just making sure, you know, like taking a, a day or taking a, a full, we do two days. We take a two day offsite and just go through our business from front to back, find out where the biggest pain points are, put them up as a goal and then break them into, into 90 day um, implementation items. And then, and then follow up on a weekly to move, make sure that we're moving the needle 30 minutes, 60 minutes on those, on those things just gives us an overview of, of what processes are, are the biggest problem, you know, like, and everything flows from that. So like any, any stop that we've pulled out where, where we've had friction due mainly from increased volume, you know, it, we open this one up and it, the floodgates open and, and it shows us where the other problems are. So if you're, if you're not looking at that on a, on a weekly, um, on a weekly basis from an operational standpoint, well, daily really, but, weekly basis from an operational standpoint, checking in quarterly to make sure that your yearly goals are still are still on point. And then and then from a yearly perspective, looking, okay, like what are we trying to accomplish? Where did we totally miss the mark? Where did we keep screwing up? Um, it's just really hard to even know where to start. But it's usually the things that cost you the most money and create the most risk. 
I want to make a quick comment on that. Uh, you're like your, your, and that is something that, you know, I've talked to you about before a, a lot blaze is your, how tightly and how structured the look annual quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily kind of communication cadence is in your business. I'm going to do a shameless plug for the, the podcast. We just released an episode literally last week called Critical Communication Cadences for Contractors. And it's about this whole idea, which is you need to aggressively over communicate to your team in ritualistic meetings, not crappy, structuralist, formless meetings that no one gets anything out of, but really thought through agenda driven, purpose driven meetings it is so much harder than you think to get a clear vision across to your team. That's just the nature of communication and uh, and how people work. And so if you can install these sort of annual, quarterly, monthly, weekly rhythms where everything get, everyone gets reminded of what's important and what isn't, the, uh, the growth that that unlocks is absolutely insane. You also mentioned Blaze to go back to some stuff we talked about offline. You mentioned project intake and you mentioned sales to the sales to production handoff, which I, if you haven't sort of alluded to already, I'd love for you to unpack a little more. Well, we like I, I, I spoke before about about gates, right? So like I where it really kind of clicked for me is I had a salesperson walk in with a with a cost sheet that was on the back of a pizza plate. Like it was it was literally had grease stains on it. And I was like, okay, we we did we at least need the same cost sheet. Like you guys need to be operating with the same cost sheet because you'd get different labor rates, and they're pulling, they're they're copying from the last time they missed our last bump. So, you know, and and we do we do a, a really structured. And again, I I I'm like, just get it, order it. Who cares? No purchase orders. Just you know. So I really got to pump the brakes, but. Um, we go through a checklist and, and if anything costs us money more than two or three times, it gets put on that checklist, you know, and it could be even like checking the height, uh, making sure that we have the height, uh, check booked by the surveyor before the framing inspection. Right. So you're not like, Oh, no one checked the height of this thing. Okay. I can't get a surveyor in here for two weeks. Now it just bumped our entire build for two weeks. Right. And I got drywall that, you know, like those kind of, those kind of things really easy throw it on a checklist, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and that, and that's, you know, that, that stuff still happens to us, but you know, that those meetings get, or those things get cut, those issues get picked up in those meetings and it gets thrown on a list. It's an, it's a, you know, we run, we run um, EOS called pinnacle now, but you know, it, it gets put on the list and it's an issue that we deal with on, uh, at least it's written down somewhere so that we can review it at those quarterly or yearly meetings. You know, where, what are our biggest issues? The other thing too, that you talked about the profit, uh, it's profit first guy. Uh, yeah, Mike. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, if you're not delivering on your, on your immediate value chain stuff, you can't work on the mission, the impact stuff and the, and the legacy piece, you need to be at least making money and, 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 uh, you know, delivering value. By, by that, you mean like the, your, your, the philanthropy you want to do, the change you want to create, the mission you want to go on, none of that's available if your business isn't extremely tightly run and making money in the first place. It's yes. like it's like be a greedy capitalist first and then you can be a good person. Being a good person without any resources is your uh your reach is limited, let's say. Nonprofit. It's a nonprofit. Um Expensive hobby is what we call it. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. great way to collect that. Zach, what, what's what are your thoughts on this? You, you've, uh, I'm, I've, I've, sh I'm sure seen um, this so many different ways. Like, I, do you have a take on which SOPs are the biggest ROI drivers in the businesses you work with at Builder Trend? Yeah, it's it's definitely the financials. It's where people feel the most opportunity. They look at their margins and they know that they could be improving those margins. And obviously that allows them to take on work and it creates that flywheel effect, right? More efficiency, better profit, more work, so on and so forth, better, more hiring. It just all goes together. And, you know, a lot of contractors backgrounds are in the building process, not the business side. And so there is a lot of need to, you know, learn like what do other contractors do? How do we actually go about, you know, setting up our receipts handling process? I mean, even just getting the information of the right person 
uh, in a timely manner can really improve your cash flow. I saw a, a, a chatter kind of talk about like, that's a big issue for them. Well, like, look at that handoff process. Where are you moving the, the data from one point to another? Are things getting lost at the end of the month? Or do you have a SOP about how soon I need it? And then, you know, your account's payable. Like how often are you paying your subs? Do you set expectations for your subs about when you're going to be paying them? And, and all I know that is, regionally based and dependent on your relationship with your subs and all those little details though, and really documenting like, this is what happens. This is how I need this to be formatted. And this is when we're gonna be, you know, sending money out. This is when we expect like customers to be, you know, getting their payments to us, all those things. People just, a lot of handshaking, a lot of verbal agreements, a lot of loosey goosey type expectations on their SOPs um, that they're not really, thinking about that that's where those margin bleeding and the, you know, the, the operational efficiency starts to add up. Um, so, you know, getting like your schedule in place uh, is huge, but a lot of people tend to focus on financial SOPs about where they can make those improvements. Although, you know, someone asked about um, the, you know, the like people who uh, wanted to, accounting services, Timothy Wingate came on my podcast, The Building Code, and he talked about that scheduling actually is more important than financial processes. So it's not to mitigate that those things aren't critical, you know, from his perspective, like if you can't even get guys on site in a timely manner or like get materials on site in a timely manner, like that adds up too. But typically that's where I find on the financial side where people need the most um, investment to really, you know, feel good about taking a vacation or being able to have a weekend with their family. If they feel like they're bleeding money, they're, they're tend to be pretty stressed. I'll uh, give my quick thoughts on this one. So, uh, we, financial controls have been have been mentioned. Financial tracking has been mentioned. Um, there's kind of three SOPs that I think are are massive headache relievers. I think for construction, especially if you're doing large average job size construction in particular, one is a standardized sales to production handoff, both in terms of the documentation and the meeting, the amount of information that gets missed from an estimator or salesperson to the, the project manager for that project is pretty mind blowing. If there isn't a really uh, well put together and centralized place for that information to be, to be stored, communicated and handed off. Um, there's a whole episode we did on that a year or so back. So that sales to production handoff is, is critical. I would say your project management SOPs, the way that you build a critical path for the project, the way that you plan out milestones, the way that you plan out your invoicing schedule, your status update meetings with clients, how you capture change orders, that's a massive headache reliever. And then the last one I would mention is project closeouts. Like if, you, if you're tired of doing warranty work and you're tired of callbacks, there's something going on with the QC at the end of the project and it's not being inspected uh, inspected closely enough. So those would be three uh, low-hanging fruit areas. Okay, we're going to switch gears here for a second. We have a chance to do a little bit of show and tell, which is really cool. Um, Brett and Blaze have been kind enough to provide a couple little goodies for us to look at. So... I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna leave live storm here and open up this. Oh, it's embedded. How cool! Actually, is it embedded? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna open it. Oh no, I can do it. Okay, never mind. I'm just gonna open YouTube. This is too complicated. Here it is. Here. Brett, walk us through this video SOP that you made. Just kind of give us the voiceover of, of why you made this and what it's showing. Sure. So we wanted to create something that was kind of a mirror image of what we were seeing in Builder Trend. And so we that first screen was essentially a matrix of uh, all the categories uh, and columns that you're seeing within Builder Trend. And what we're showcasing here is this AI program that is actually registering every click that we make. So from start to finish, we go through within Builder Trend, showing this is what you this is what you click on first. This is what you click on second. You can um, add kind of specifics or descriptions of what you're actually doing, um, and what this will do effectively with 
be if you hired somebody new and you wanted to show them uh, how to do a change order. Um, you would just essentially give them the the access to this Google document that has links that would take you essentially right to that um, that SOP, and they could have one screen open uh, with this kind of SOP. Uh, on their screen and then on the other screen they can have builder trying to just kind of follow along. walk through it I'll follow along the walk through correct so this is a great example of a video based sop and if we go back to this definition from tom hughes i saw a bunch of people talking about gemba docs in the chat box this is tom, tom's the guy that um built gemba docs um uh, he's become a friend actually o over the last year or so so the reason he says an SOP is a clearly documented and not a not a written document is because in the modern era, a lot of the stuff isn't written anymore. It, it is video based. It's a series of steps for sure, but it's captured using a more modern medium. Um, one tool that I'm a massive, massive fan on and think fan of and think that you should all be using is something called Loom. Uh, if any of you guys are already using Loom, let us know in the chat box. It's This is like the most, the simplest tool ever. It is a screen recorder that captures your voice. You can choose to be on camera or on or off camera. But if you're trying to show people on your team how to do stuff on your computer, you just hit record on Loom. It captures the video. It exports a link. You send the link. They can watch it. Within Breakthrough Academy, we have in like very robust standard operating procedures for super complex tasks that are built entirely using Loom links. Nobody, nobody entered a keystroke in Microsoft Word ever. It's all just video based. So, um, what and Brett, what was the tool that you? I don't know if you mentioned it. What was the tool that you used for this, where it's actually capturing the clicks? Uh, the the AI program is called Scribe. Scribe, yeah. Okay, it's, pro it's probably quite similar. Uh, check out Loom, check out Scribe. These are really, really good. Yeah, okay, a bunch of people love Loom in the chat. Cool. Um, okay, we let's move on to Blazes. So uh, this is, what are we looking at here, Blaze? I have it open. Um, should, should I open these chart? documents first or should I open the flow chart first? Um, you can just, yeah, I'm not sure what, what, she, what she sent. Um, yeah, that's our execution. So like in, in PIM project management, there's uh, initiation, planning, execution, uh, monitor control and project closeout. And really that, that initiation is our sales, sales uh, um, step and that sales process. Planning is our pre-construction um, up all the way up to contract signing. And that execution is, is this is the handoff from production to sales that mm -hmm. we do. You know, like uh, that's sending out all our purchase orders, materials, long lead time item, long lead time item, having the the lead walk the job. You know, we're doing checkoffs for uh, site protection, location of bins, location of where we're dropping toilets, all all that. Uh, you can see order porta potty, all the stuff that we're like, oh, we forgot to do this. Okay, stick it in, and all of these things too are they're the latest. It can happen without becoming a critical path item. Mm -hmm. So stuff can happen before. But this is the latest point it can happen. And the stuff that's in blue is, is stuff that we have a written SOP for. So. I love how visual this is. It reminds me of like the X's and O's that a football coach uses to describe a play. Like it's very, it, you're able to take a super broad, super complex super complex process. And this, this is still a pretty, you know, this is a big wide document that you'd have to zoom in and zoom out of, but it does centralize the whole thing in one place really well, doesn't it? This, like when I talk about onboarding, like we have these printed out on the wall upstairs in our training room that I'm yeah. sitting in. And I, I take all new hires, whether they're um, a laborer or a um, interior designer or whatever, and I take them through every single step and I show them where they impact. You know, and, and it's a two hour presentation, you know, it's kind of overwhelming, but like we boil it down to one to one sheet so that they can kind of see it. But these are the steps that are embedded in it. You know, And then I think where this becomes really powerful is I, there's certain things on this on this process that someone could click in on. And then I think it opens like a proper written SOP as well. So like if you want to get super granular, super detailed, this is all 
here too. Yeah, so we have an operations manual that we can, and, and these things, it's built in Google Drive, and then all of these SOPs are, are just, you know, that you link to them, so you only have to fill them out in one, or update them in one, in one spot. Um, what again, do you guys use for this kind of flow chart building, Blaze? Is this Lucid was, chart? Is it? It was Vimeo, I think, did that one. Or not Vimeo. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I so it, it looks to me it looks to me like it's Lucid Chart. I, the, I, that's another um, very inexpensive I don't, I don't think platform. It was, okay. It was uh, Vizio. Vizio. Okay. <laughs> the chat yeah. box is bailing us out. Yeah. Thank you. you. Guys, yeah. Um, <laughs> the biggest thing here is is I didn't do this myself, right? Like I just I just I we went on Upwork and we hired somebody to do this, and then and then we we I sent we. Um, identified one of our project managers who was really into this stuff, you know, and, and, and two is you want to temper it. You don't want everything totally prescribed. You know, you want it, you want it, enough information there that they can, that they know what the steps are and what the goals are, what the outcome is. Mm -hmm. You had this done on Upwork. That's great. So you gave them some, you gave them some information and said, make it for us. Like the actual well, building of the, she, she, she uh, we, we set it up like a project. Huh. And we we she would interview people about what the step was, and she would draw what they explained. Yeah, and then we would troubleshoot it, and we would run and we would run the work through it, and be like, okay, well, we're missing this, add this, and you know, because even regardless if you have them, your processes documented or not, you still have processes. You know, right. you might just have five different ways to do things. Yeah, and and, uh, and three of those ways create a negative outcome. So, and then two of them are are great. So you, you take all those and put them together and and get the team yeah. um one overarching message i, I really want to send here to everyone that's that's online is um use the tools available guys like like you know we talked about loom we talked about scribe we talked about lucid chart we talked about visio we talked about figma i mean the quant the volume and quantity and quality of inexpensive online tools for 10 bucks a month 12 bucks a month like if you're getting expo crayon like markers and a whiteboard still that's fine for a nice brainstorming session but everything exists online now use the free tools use the inexpensive tools available to you um they're so user friendly and i just think that these are two you know uh, brett's video sop blazes chart here like th this is the stuff that we're talking about here and i just wanted to give you guys a visual anchor to see what's possible when you really focus on this Okay, we're going to do a quick time out. Uh, where are we at here for time? We're at 10.58. Okay, so really important. We have three questions still to answer. <laughs> we have three questions still to answer. We have 30 minutes to do it. Uh, we're going to do a quick mention of Builder Trend, quick mention of Breakthrough Academy, and then we're going to get back to the question. So don't. there's almost 300 of you. Don't go anywhere. Um, Brett, talk to us. Uh, sorry, Zach, talk to us quickly about uh, about Builder Trend. Yeah, and see, we have some familiar faces in in the chat. You know, that know Builder Trend well. We're the industry leader in construction management software, and we really you know strive to be uh, a tool that you guys can use to really implement um, effective processes in your business across the entire journey, as we like to call it, from your sales process all the way to closeout and your warranty. So. We'd love to have you as customers a lot of great customers in the chat, um, even a former employee, a couple of my own employees are here. So uh, yeah, it's awesome to be here. Um, and and we we thank you for, for doing this with us. Um, I'll, I'll mention really quickly Breakthrough Academy and who we are and what we do. My PowerPoint's being slow, so just give it a second to load. Um, Breakthrough Academy is a sort of, you could think of it like a coaching and advising company that only works with contractors. So we implement something called the contractor growth method. Uh, it has six parts, right? Financial controls so that you know what you're doing and you can see your data, structured roles so that people on your team have defined KPIs and deliverables and job descriptions that they're executing on. We implement world-class hiring funnels so you can get the people you need. We build training SOPs like we're talking about today so that there's a way in which things get done that's consistent and linear and agreed upon. We implement a sales process that removes you from the day-to-day -day, and then we help you with your strategic execution, that annual planning, quarterly planning, the stuff that Blaze was talking about a minute ago. We pair you up with an industry specialized coach. We have, you know, I'm biased, but in my in my opinion, the best in the industry. 
Uh, they help you build the strategic plan. They help you figure out what systems you need. Every single week, they meet with you to check your data and hold you accountable to the implementation process. Um, because the best part, but also the worst part about being an entrepreneur is that you don't have a boss. So it's pretty easy to kick the can down the road and not do stuff that you know you need to do. We're really specialized. We're not, um, we are not generalists. We only, we only work with sort of these niches. So if you're in the construction space, roofing, landscaping, painting, you're a specialized trade, like a, like an electrician, a plumber, uh, an HVAC company, a drywaller. Uh, and or if you're a home service, like you, you're a moving company, or you do junk removal, or you do uh, exterior maintenance stuff like that, this is kind of our our world. Um, and so we drive some really cool results. Last year, our, biz our businesses did 1.7 billion in in revenue. Um, they did they increased the revenue by 26 percent, net profit by 43 percent. So we systemize for the sake of the results, not just to kind of talk about them on webinars. Um, and if you've been in business for a couple of years, you're between one and 15 million a year, you want to systemize your company, you want to develop as a leader, this is a, a really kind of custom built solution for you. So we're going to do a, this is what I wanted to do the, the quick pause at the top of the hour for, um, if, okay, really important. We're going to go for another 30 minutes. Please don't go anywhere. If there's like a, you know, a fire erupting outside, you need to leave. You can get your, your downloads. You can get the replay. You can get all the stuff we talked about today. Um, by going to try bta.com slash SOP, you fill out the landing page, first name, last name, company name, industry, etc. And then at the bottom, this is really important. You select two boxes. So if you want to talk to breakthrough Academy, you say, you know, send me my templates and let's talk about how you can help my business. You can sign up for a free discovery call with us. You could think of that as like a, a therapy session for business owners where we just, you get to lie down, you get to talk about your feelings, you get to tell us why your customers suck and tell about, tell us about the systems that are broken and, um, and we will listen and we'll give you some, some advice. And if, if breakthrough Academy seems like it could be a fit for you, um, we'll have another meeting. If you want to check out Builder Trend, you select that box, um, and I think it's something similar. Zach, is it is it does that sign you up for a demo? Is it a call? Like what what sort of the 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 CTA on on this one? Yeah, you guys usually have people do. Yep, it'll you know you can sign up at any time at going to buildertrend.com and clicking sign up now, but that would give you an opportunity to kind of get a little bit of more engagement with the software. One of our uh, business development uh, representatives would reach out to you to set up a demo and, and kind of answer your questions. So, uh, free. T there's a there's a pop up on your screen if you haven't clicked it already. That'll take you to that page. Uh, see you, Ryan Stewart. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, I hope I get to hang out with you soon. Um, and one last shameless plug is for the podcast. So, Contract Revolution every Wednesday, every platform. <laughs> hey, that's Blaze. That's a fun arrow. Uh, I, I like that. I like those graphics, Aaron. Uh, so this is, this is just like our free content we release, uh, we release every Wednesday. Uh, we've had, you know, they got 130 episodes now, a great resource if you're in the truck or at the gym and you, you want to learn about business stuff. Okay. Back to the questions. So what have we covered so far? Evolution story, where to start, which implementation items have had the biggest impact. We did a little show and tell with the video SOP, the written SOPs. Now I want to come back to this question I alluded to earlier. How do you get your team involved in the creation of these? Um, I've got some thoughts on this, but I want to start with our guests. Blaze, what do you find effective in, in getting uh, the whole organization involved with the, the rollout of SOPs? Well, I think number one is culture. You have to create a culture where, where, um, it's okay. It's okay to have failures, you know, like those, and those failures are basically learns, uh, learnings. Um, you you got to make sure that when you when you when those failures happen, you're not focusing on the problem. You're focusing on the process that allowed it, allowed it to happen, mm -hmm. and people feel safe enough to like, hey, I did this. This is the result that came. Because you'll find that some of those processes, they're 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 there, and you know nine times out of 10, they're okay. Or, you know, 99 times out of a hundred, it's fine. But th that one catastrophic failure that you, that you, um, that you missed, you know, that once so you put it in the process, you know, so 
you know, everybody needs to be, um, you know, we call it being a learner. It's like Brene Brown, being a learner, not a knower, right? Like the guy that's going, oh, I know, I know. Oh, I don't need that feedback. I, I know, I know, right? Those people, people let them fail, right? Whereas, you know, if you're like, if you can get the feedback and, and, and fix it before it goes off the rails, you know, everybody has to have that mentality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you find that your um your like your field staff, your office staff? I mean, th these are not business owners, right? So, like, you, they could make the case, like, "Hey, Blaze, this isn't my job description. Like, I'm paid to manage projects. I'm I'm paid to build. Uh, I'm paid to like I I don't like this is sort of like all these business systems that you're talking about. I'm not really interested, or that's not what I'm here to do." Have you found pushback or you, have you found that you're like maybe pleasantly surprised with how, how bought in people get with, with the creation of these things? What are your thoughts on that? My, I mean, my, my leadership style is a sell. So like, I'm always, I'm always trying to influence people into, into why, you know, telling them the why getting behind and, and, and re, and the reality is most of this stuff is in place to make their lives easier. You know, and if you start with that way, you know, like, you know, most, I, I truly believe that 99.99% of the people here um, want are doing their best job, right? So like, like it's, it's, it's always a process problem, not always, but most of the time it's a process problem, not a people problem, you know, like, and then, and if it's a people problem, then it's just a performance management issue. Um, but, you know, you have to make it safe to want to make those, those, uh, um, those changes, you know, and those, and the, the failures, if you find something, it should be celebrated. Oh, sweet. Okay. Well, let's not do that again. You know, let's get it. But if you keep banging your head against the wall, like, mm -hmm. you know, make sure, make sure that, you, you know, like you're not treating a symptom, you're treating the cause. If that kind of makes. I've always been very pleasantly surprised with the level of buy-in that, that my team has around this stuff. Um, nobody, you know, it's, it, People actually like putting their mark on the business more than you think. And there's always going to be the occasional person who just is like, they're not wired that way. And that, that's fine. Keep, keep them on the job site. Um, you want those worker bees. But when asked, I'm usually quite impressed with the level of excitement and, and quality that I get back. But can, uh, I, can I add? Yeah, you yeah. didn't talk a little bit about change management, you know, because, mm -hmm. you, you know, you need to find your early adopters and, and you need to you need to write a story. You can't just write a process and throw it out there expect it to be followed you know especially if it's a major change you know people are first thing they're thinking is how does this how is this going to affect me how, how like we, you know is this extra work for me or whatever you know and you'll find that too is if you delegate this to somebody they will write that process only how it affects them so it might have some detrimental um you know like uh, and, and i'll give a quick, a quick example is you know, why are we adding all these receipts to our cost plus invoices? Let's just do them and we'll, and, and, or let's just, you know, give them the invoice. And if they ask for it, we can audit it. Well, now, now it creates a problem with all our whole pullback releases. So like, you know, now we're spending four hours of project manager to, to get all these holdback releases when they were just getting copies of the invoices that took the project control or the project admin an extra 20 minutes. She just didn't like doing it. Right, created all this extra work down line and 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 also a cash flow problem because now we're like weeks behind, months behind our holdbacks. You know, just a just a quick example. Like that's a really good point. Yeah. The yeah, older yeah. I get, the more I realize the psychology of people is maybe underrated. I mean, I've had a lot more success on like on trying to put myself in their perspective. Our nature is to resist change. And so like mm -hmm. acknowledging that and trying to say that you're part of that change goes much further in a business than trying to force someone to do something because they're going to naturally resist it. It's in their nature. Their, their, their habits are this for a reason. Um, and so ownership is powerful. And what I like to do, you know, when I was working with contractors regularly, I encourage them to find positive ways to reinforce the behavior. And so little things like competitions, games, if we hit this number, you get a pizza party or they, you know, guys would buy like six packs for the guys that uploaded the most daily logs. And it seems campy and cheesy, but they <laughs> loved it. They loved it. I mean, like I would get text messages and they'd be like, yeah, this guy won this week. And like, this is, and, and it got the outcome for the business owner, but they felt like they were having fun. Yeah. We, when we first started doing our process mapping, like 
it was it was stickies with the team we'd have we'd throw pizza out and people would yeah. be putting stickies on the wall and we would just sit there as a team and troubleshoot spend spend an hour once every couple of weeks just kind of working through it um Brett, I want to I want to get you to weigh in on this because you mentioned earlier you had I don't know if it was a what role I think his name was Sergio who who really kind of rolled up his sleeves and and um put a huge put some big effort into this w- with you talk a little bit about the team involvement that that you fostered at Procore. Sure. Uh, well, we do weekly team meetings. Um, on Tuesdays where we kind of talk about projects. We talk about things that went right, things that went wrong. If there was something that went wrong that we could document in a certain way that we can keep it from happening again. Uh, that's what we try to do in those meetings. Um, we have, we've created a couple ongoing uh, lists and documents. One is called lessons learned. And so that document mm-hmm. Uh, is kind of any pain points that happened either, you know, middle, beginning, middle, end of the job, whatever happens, we're kind of documenting it. And if there needs to be an SOP created to keep it from happening again, uh, we're, we're doing that. And so um, I, I asked Sergi to kind of run point on creating the SOPs within Builder Trend. He was the one that knew Builder Trend the best out of, out of anybody in the office. So I asked him to to kind of sort through some different programs. Uh, like I said before, we we found Scribe and, and he kind of took the lead on that. And really over the past few weeks it has, it has done a deep dive to get that really refined and have something that the rest of the team can follow. And into Blaze's uh, point there, the why is super important with doing these um, because a lot of the time the why is we're doing it now so we can grow the team. And when we grow the team, we're going to need to give these new hires something to work from. Because if we don't, we know that when we have that new hire, it's going to take much more of all of our times collectively to train that person. Whereas if we create these SOPs, they are going to be documented and we're going to get a lot of use out of these for the long for the long run so it's not just a one and done type document it's going to be something that's going to have an roi for a long time so this this lessons learned document is this like a this is like a live this is like a live google doc with all your guys' screw ups correct yeah that's awesome <laughs> that's a good idea i like that there's probably some gold in there probably some laughs too um I'll chuck in a couple thoughts here before we get to our last couple questions. I love when it comes to getting your team involved, you guys have talked about kind of the salesmanship, the the selling, the why, making it make sense to them, showing them how it benefits their life and makes their work life easier. So I won't belabor the point there. But one thing I want to bring up again is this idea of gamification. Like, you know, it you could come up with a you know $50 prize or gift card or maybe it's something that you know the team really likes maybe it's a tool like something around like quick hit systemization and this whole idea i've seen it come up a, a whole bunch of 2 second lean that paul akers talks about this idea of of kaizen or continuous improvement continuous improvement happens generally in bite sized chunks very rarely is it these massive overhauls of certain things it's it's little it's little improvements that get baked into the system over time and i think that if you can have <laughs> prizes rewards gift cards straight up cash ready for your team to to incentivize that kind of behavior and that kind of thinking those are dollars well spent um the other thing that i would uh the other thing that i would mention too is like an actual annual award around this we at breakthrough academy have uh, an awards night every year um one of the awards we give out there's five i won't go through all of them but one of them is called the implementer of the year and it goes to the breakthrough academy member who implement implemented the most the most systems the most successfully in the past 12 month cycle and it's a big deal to, to win that award I don't, I don't think there's any reason you couldn't do that at your Christmas party. Um, do, do it in your annual cycle. 
And so I think I think uh, rewarding people and then celebrating people that, that take this on is, is a big piece. Going back to this idea of ch change management for a second, um, there's a, a, a flip side to this coin. We're talking about SOPs. We're talking about systemizing your business. Everything sounds so easy in a web class um, or a podcast or whatever. <laughs> One thing to really be aware of and sort of reality check your thinking or anchor the excitement level around this is this really great quote. I can't remember who it's from. I want to give them credit, but it's this. Most businesses die of indigestion, not starvation. And what it means is entrepreneurs being visionary types are often quite distant from the actual work involved that it's e it's very very easy to overload your team and overload the change in an annual cycle i mean we've breakthrough academy does this like seemingly every other year we just kind of get we get a little too excited and we bite off too much the team becomes exhausted you have people insanely burnt out and frustrated um and the whole thing delays and doesn't happen so you need to, you need to ask yourself and it's a very personal question about your own business and your own capacities and who you have on the team and what your overarching strategy is. It's like, how much is the right amount? It's probably a little less than you think it is. Like, you know, in January during your off season, when you're away on it's, it's easy for us to be overly ambitious. How much is the right amount? And really try to stick to that because four good systems done exceptionally well is orders of magnitude better than 10 systems done halfway, if that makes sense. So I just think, you know, remember that most businesses die of indigestion, not starvation. So uh, those are my comments on how do you involve your team on the creation of SOPs. Maybe okay. it was you. Maybe, maybe you came up with that. I didn't. I didn't. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a quote stealer, man. That's like I'm just I've, I'm a walking Rolodex of great sound bites that I've heard but didn't come up with. So I'm gonna quote um, I'll quote you. I'll, I'll it's like, what's that Michael Scott quote? Yeah, that's exactly, exactly. It's like Abraham Lincoln at the end. Yeah, you 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 miss all the shots you don't take, yeah, Terry right. Fox. Yeah, Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott. That's right. That's me. Um. Okay, so let's talk about accountability here. Like, we can build stuff. We can put it in place. We can, we can, uh, we can agree to it, and then, and then, human nature kind of sets in. And three months later, six months later, we we've really deviated from from what was what was agreed to. So, Brett, we'll start with you. How do you hold your team accountable to using the systems, to using the SOPs that you've made? Well, I think just having a weekly pulse on everything during our, during those weekly meetings, we're actually um, reflecting on the week. And so it, it, it really comes down to that audit and not letting things, not, not coming back months or, you know, once a year to look at those things. It's kind of being deliberate every week uh, to make sure that things are happening with Builder Trend. It's very nice because you can see in your notifications everything that's happening throughout the day and so you can kind of have your finger on the pulse whereas before when our business was operating with text messages or emails you wouldn't know if somebody sent a text message randomly to a trade partner or a vendor or somebody in the field and so having one central funnel for everything to flow through has been that accountability that uh, we never had before. Uh, it was always kind of left in the dark on things and people were doing double work. Uh, we use this analogy a lot. Uh, what's the best way to start a horse? And that is to ask two people to feed it because the other person thinks that the other person fed it. And so that's kind of the mentality we're trying to avoid that and having people know what their lanes are, know what they're responsible for, and just really kind of auditing that that on a daily basis or a weekly basis. And, uh, I love that. That is, that is a great way to starve a horse. Poor horse. Um, 
weekly check we- weekly check ins I think are huge. Uh, I think I think having one owner for the really important stuff is is really huge. Um, what Brett like? Do, what what's your take on what's your philosophy towards? when someone is kind of deviating from the SOP or, and, and it's not, maybe it's not intentional. Maybe it's just exhaustion. Maybe it's just some laziness. Maybe it's, they're a little ADD. They don't have the best attention to detail, but when you're working with someone on your team who, you know, for three weeks in a row, hasn't followed the procedure for how you like reports to be pulled or hasn't done proper quality control at the close out of a project, like what, how do you approach those conversations with, with your people? Um, I just kind of asked the question, you know, is there something more that you need help with? Is, are there other resources uh, that uh, we can offer you to be able to follow those procedures? Um, but also on the opposite end of that spectrum is to make sure that, you know, you have attaboys in there. So when they are doing something uh, that, you know, you're recognizing that doesn't have to be, you know, way overboard, but just, you know, the, the attaboys go a long way uh, and mix that in with, uh, is there something more I can help you with um, instead of kind of really going in on the negatives and why didn't you do this? Why don't you do that? Um, I had a really great uh, conversation the other day with someone on the podcast about this whole work, this whole like accountability idea, which I think is another one of these like overused sort of buzzwords that, you know, most people don't really understand, but you'll hear it in every single TED talk and every, you know, accountability is super important. So, okay. Well, what do we mean by this? And he had a really like fresh take on it. He's like, accountability is not like torturing your people when things don't happen the way that you want them to. He's like, what does an accountant do? He's like, I thought that was an interesting question. An accountant, you know, that's, this is the root word, word here gives an account of what happened. They, 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 they bring to light reality, you know, in this case, using numbers and spreadsheets and balance sheets and all sorts of tools, but they give an account of what happened. And I think the best way to hold your people accountable is, is approach it that way. It's, it's not like a fire and brimstone kind of, I need to punish people when they do bad. It's literally just like going through. Okay. So what did actually happen here? Oh, you know, we followed this step. We followed this step. We, sort of followed this one and this one got forgotten about okay cool so that's the root issue going back to what blaze says about focus on the the process not the the problem or the people so um i just kind of like that that approach like, give an account of what happened that's the best way to hold your people accountable blaze do you want to weigh in on this one how, how do you do this yeah i mean we we do a lot of communication training ar- around this really crucial accountabilities is you know it's it's having that follow-up conversation with someone this is this is what it, what what I thought the ex- expectation was this is this is the reality that happened my story is that you're doing this this and that can I check that with you and then and then exploring the gap like why did why didn't it happen you know like what you know and you, and you keep kind of digging and you work with that person until you come to that agreement and then it's just performance management at that time yeah you know like you know this is affecting our relationship, you know, whether that be a sub, a sub trade or a, or an employee or a teammate or whatever, these are the expectations. And, you know, and you have those agreements it's, and it's, you know, mostly about just communication. You know, I, it's not, it, we struggle with this all the time, like, yeah. <laughs> like it doesn't get easier, you know? Um, but I mean, the conversations get easier, but, uh, um, yeah. Um, I think that sometimes people have a vision that businesses more mature or larger than them have this a hundred percent dialed in and figured out. And the reality is they just, they, they don't like even exceptional leaders still get nervous before having a tough conversation with someone. Critical conversations are never that pleasant, but oh so necessary. So I, I think just like taking a deep breath and, and doing those performance management chats when you need to is important. Okay, we have like 40 questions piling up here. Um, so let's get to them. Um, I'm just going to pick the ones that speak to me. Um, okay, here's one from Sarah. 
Production has a hard time meeting. How can I express the importance of these leadership meetings that identify growth opportunities to those that work more hands-on with the project? So the question is, how do I get sort of more boots on the ground, more job site focused employees involved with like higher level discussions and sort of leadership meetings? Blaze, Brett, do either of you have a, have a thought on that? I, I do a little bit like, like, uh, um, we're managers, they're makers. So that you need to one schedule them. Like if you schedule uh, a process development meeting with a field guy for 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock or one o'clock, their day is shot. So usually it's like eight, nine o'clock in the morning, you know, or, or end of day. And if, and if it's end of day, you're not going to get a lot of brain power out of them. So it might be more of an FYI meeting, but, uh, um, it, that's the biggest the biggest piece and you, you do need to sell them on the why why this will improve their day-to-day -day, um task and you know get them some coffees or some muffins or some soccer slices right like, like you know make it make it a treat to come in to to help build that part of the business mm -hmm. not a not a mandatory requirement um Okay, another great question. Delray Landscapes, all the talk of SOPs, but where do they live? In an employee handbook, a training manual, a paper process manual, how do employees access the information? That's a really good question. Brett, where do you put yours? Uh, all this, all the SOPs that we've created are will actually live in Builder Trend. Uh, we have a single truth uh, buy-in, which is builder trend. We used to run a, a lot of documentation out of Google drive, but we've pulled any relevant documents that we need out of Google drive and put it into builder trend. Uh, our, all of our field staff has been trained with builder trend. And so we make it a point to make sure they know where to access important information. And the guys in the field, that important information is typically plans and communications that the office staff is having with trade partners and to make sure that they're kind of in the loop. So we give them just enough information in the field so they don't feel overwhelmed and kind of push that, push that information away just because we don't want to overload them with too much stuff. Mm -hmm. Blaze, what about you? We're, we're, uh, we're still in the drive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, we've looked at a couple different options like trainual and, and different things. It, it, I didn't think we're, you know, um, sophisticated enough yet to get to that point, but yeah, we're in the drive. Google drive works. OneDrive works. Dropbox works. Um, should be cloud-based so that people can use it on different devices, obviously, but the, the, the thing to add there is a lot of our staff are not google drive users too right so so we still print stuff off on paper and mm -hmm. get it out to you know tactile learners so. um i there's uh, when you look at uh like a lot of lean philosophy and one thing that they talk about when they're answering this question um delray landscapes uh whoever you are uh is they need to exist where the work happens. So if you look at an assembly line at, okay, not Ford, we're not going to say Ford. Who makes it good? Chevy. Yeah. If you look at any like assembly, Toyota, let's use a Toyota assembly line. They will have charts about how to build every single thing at that station of the assembly line, right? They call it a visual first workplace. If you go to Subway, and you looked behind the counter, they would have little flow charts for how to make every single sandwich, right? Like very visual, lettuce first, tomatoes, and then you do this meat, this meat, the cheese, but like it's all there. And so this idea of like, put it where the work happens is really important. So Blaze has it all, and everyone should have it all in one centralized place so you know where to find it. But in addition to that, you could print it out and tape it. You could make a binder. I like laminated stuff. You know, I have my whole sales team. I wonder if I can dig this out here. My whole sales team has stuff like this on a ring. You know, these are like our discovery questions. This is our business assessment process. It's all here. It sits on their desk where the work happens. Um, 
this Gamba Docs thing is really cool because what it does is it spits you basically it's photo first SOP building and then it will spit back a QR code that you could then just like print as a sticker and put on your crew kit so that you'd have, you know, this is this process, this is this process, scan on your phone immediately. There's a whole bunch of ways to crack that nut, but just think about that. Put it where the work happens. Um, I don't think anyone, else, gonna... Zach, I didn't hear from you. Do you want to weigh in on this one? Well, I was just going to say, I don't think, you know, someone in the chat, Robert said like the physical, you know, it seems old school, but it also creates a realness and an accessibility that I think is important to kind of codify it as being legitimate. Like this is what we have. So like, don't, don't think just because we're in this digital age that a physical version of it isn't going to be beneficial. It absolutely 100%. is. Yes. I, I mean, even on our team, we do the same thing at Builder Chat. We have 250 employees in my apartment. We print stuff out. We're a tech company. Yeah. There's a reason. It works. It's effective. We need people to have that information. It's more critical that they do than us just like risking that they make it up on their own because they don't have access to it. I, I couldn't agree more. I, I you know, I, I think that iPads have their uses, but there's there's a time when like just paper and some pen is like never killed anyone. So I have really go ahead, Blaze. Our they're sitting on our wall, all those uh and yeah, then, you know, like, and we they just put them. We're gonna we just redid them, so we're gonna print them back out. So they're big. They're here. So where the training happens is where they are. Question from Matt Wallace: uh, Do you have SOPs for how your customers and sub trades communicate with you? How do you get buy in from them if it is something other than the norm of texting and calling? When they don't buy in, how do you handle that? So. We, we do uh, um, that first meeting with the client where they meet the project manager and the, and the lead carpenter, they, they make a, they go through a checklist and one of it is communications how, and they, they make a, they make an agreement of how communication is going to flow in the project. And, and, you know, and they, we emphasize how important it is uh, for communication if we're doing a bi-weekly or a weekly or, or who's going to be involved in that. And then we sign off on that, you know, and, and and if there's a problem that shows up in communication later, we go back to that and update it. You lead, you lead and you dictate the communication cycle, not the other way around, though. That's the important part. Kind of, kind of. You, you lead the conversation so that they feel that they have, a, they, that you bring them in to, to uh, make the plan together. But yeah, we're leading it. But, but, but I, I guess what I'm saying is there, there's room for their input on it, but there's an, there's a, there's a, there's an agreed upon rhythmical communication cycle that happens throughout the project. It's not just as lazy fair as, yeah, just like text me or call me if you have any questions. Like yeah, that, that is we, not a recipe for success. Yeah. We even say, you know, there's, there's only two reasons that you, this is the number you call an emergency. Emergencies are smoke and water. Um, you know, if you text a project manager after, after five o'clock, you're, you're not going to get an answer till the morning, you know, and, and just set those expectations, you know, like, so I, I bet you, Matt, as, cause he asked this question, Matt Wallace asked this question as you're answering it, he may be thinking, or someone else is thinking, yeah, that wouldn't work with my customers. Have you like, do you, what's the level of pushback that you guys have gotten from clients? Is this a pretty easy expectation to set? Uh, is it a tough pill to swallow? Do, do they not care? Like what's. How hard is this to implement? I, I, the, well, there, there, we ask, how, how do you want to be communicated through this? And then when we just go through and we make those agreements, you know, it's not even a, it's not even a, it's no pushback at all. It's, it's, you know, they've, they've made that discussion. And then again, you're, if anything happens, it's okay. We made this agreement and we were meeting those. Do you want to change that agreement or like, would you like more communication? And, and you, if you're not doing your, your biweekly check-ins with your client, you know, you're not, there's no room to make those adjustments either. Right. And so, you know, and that's this, I mean, it's harder with a, you know, a cement finisher sub that uh, uses a, uses a flip phone T9 texting kind of, <laughs> right. Who never yeah. has minutes and is always out of data. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but he's an awesome trade, but you just, you have to, you have to have internally a way of dealing with that person, right? He's not logging in and accepting a, a, a an invite on builder trend of when he's going to show up. Yeah. So you assign that to the project manager and they're going to phone them a week out and phone them the next day and phone them or meet them on site. Right. Like, yeah. Uh, Brett, Zach, anything else you want to, you want to add to that question just about customer communication? Uh, 
Go ahead, ahead, Zach. You're more important. Oh, you're way more important than me. Um, we, in our contract, we, we have it that all customer communication uh, will flow through Builder Trend, and uh, they get they get three options. They can get an email, they can get a push notification, or uh, a text message. And so, again, we start with the why, and we show them when we're meeting with the clients, this is how we operate. If you send your message through Builder Trend, it will not get missed because we will all see it as opposed to if you send a text message to the project manager, the site super that's on site the next day may not get that message. And so there's huge benefit and we tell them the why. And, and as soon as they see the ease of builder trend and messaging, and uh, you can comment based on what you're actually talking about, it all keeps it in one spot. Um, the, the feedback has been phenomenal with, with that. Cool. Guys, we are almost out of time. So we're going to, we're going to move, we're going to get back to some, uh, the close out here for those of you still in the chat box, there's like 200 some out of you here. Just let us know in the chat. What was your biggest takeaway so far? Like, I want to know if there's one gold nugget, if there's one thing we've been talking for 90 minutes here, what is one thing that you took from this that you're going to take action on? that you're going to do next week or sooner. Let us know what that thing was, that gold nugget for you in the chat box here. Take a second, type that out and let us know. As you do that, I'm just going to do another quick reminder. This event was brought to you by Builder Trend uh, and by Breakthrough Academy. So if you're looking, if you're kind of doing some CRM shopping, you're looking for project management tools, uh, do book yourself a, a call with Builder Trend and learn a little bit more. If you're looking for like system implementation and advising for your construction company or for your trades company, you're definitely going to want to check out Breakthrough Academy and the contractor growth method. Um, once again, the page to go do all this at is trybta.com slash SOP. We'll put a little bubble, a little pop-up on the screen again here in a second. Should come up shortly. Um, it's also in the chat box. We put a link there that you can click on. So try pd.com slash SOP fill out first name, last name, company name, email, a uh, few other bits and pieces, few other details from there. You can book a call with breakthrough Academy and we'd love to do that. Or you can book a call with builder trend. They'd love to do that. There's the pop-up on screen. There's also kind of this bundle of SOP examples, SOP templates, uh, if you don't want to just type something into GPT, you want to use ours and tweak that, uh, please go ahead and grab that. Uh, you will find them very useful uh, and save you a lot of time. While you're doing that, I want to take a quick second and really like sincerely thank our guests today. Um, you know, Brett and, and Blaze both run really significant you know, companies in their respective markets. They've taken an hour and a half to talk to us today. They took an hour last week to prep with us. Uh, their time is extremely valuable. And 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 they've, they've I, I think, you know, been very transparent, sharing stuff on screen, sharing their secrets, uh, especially in an industry where, where people generally aren't as open about this stuff. So if you're still here on the chat box, if you guys just type, type out a, a big thank you for uh, Blaze and Brett. And a big thank you for Zach and, and Builder Trend as well for putting this on with us. Um, thank you guys so much for doing this. I, I really appreciate it. I hope we get to do it again soon. Thank, thank you, Ben. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Contractor Evolution. If you've already subscribed to our channel, consider sharing this episode with another contractor who you think needs to hear it.